Monday. I've started titling these to make them easier to keep track of. So this one's going to be called Sleepless and Creepy. I woke up last night and found Twilight staring at me. She didn't say anything. She didn't ask for anything. She just stared at me. I asked her if she was okay and she said she had a headache, and then went back to sleep. I don't know what to do. I'm really worried about her. I sent a letter to Princess Celestia last night, but she hasn't replied. It's not like the princess to ignore one of our letters. What's going on? I went down to the market today to buy some groceries, and the place was practically a ghost town. Every pony's locked up their homes and no one wants to talk. I wanted to explore more, but I had to get back to Twilight. When I got back home, she was in the basement. She's been there all day since I'd gotten home. I don't know what she's doing down there, but when I checked on her, she tells me she doesn't want to be bothered. I'm beginning to think... Hang on, well, that's coughing again. But it sounds different now. It sounds... It sounds more like screaming. The Royal Guard just came by. They... They said something about not being able to leave. No one in town was allowed to go anywhere. Canterlot Royal Orders. I tried to tell them Twilight was sick, that we needed to go to Canterlot General, but it's like they didn't hear me. They didn't answer any of my questions and just told me to stay inside. I tried to get Twilight to come upstairs and help explain, but she just told me to leave her alone. What is going on? I sent Princess Celestia another message. Hopefully she sends me something back soon. I can hear her. Twilight's coughing on the other side of the basement door. I keep asking her what's wrong, but she says she's fine. I snuck down there to check on her. She was sitting in her lab with dozens and dozens of books open, and she seemed like she was trying to read them all at once, muttering about time. I asked her if she needed anything, and she said... She said the weirdest thing. She told me there was something wrong with her blood, and she was trying to fix it. I asked her what she meant, but she started screaming at me to leave her alone. She chased me upstairs and into the kitchen, and that's where I am now. Tomorrow I'm going to go see if Applejack can help. Tuesday. Visitor. Twilight just woke me up. She's screaming again, but she's screaming my name this time, and it sounds like she's crying. I went down to the basement door. I could hear Twilight on the other side. She was coughing again. One long, continuous, choking cough, following the clicking sound. I realized that the clicking sound was when she inhales. That's what her breathing sounds like now. I vowed to hunt down Nurse Redheart tomorrow. She's still got to be in town, right? They wouldn't leave the town without a doctor, right? Twilight was crying. I could just make it through the raspy cough. She kept saying she figured it out, but there wasn't enough time left. Then she started crying again, then laughing. She said it was funny and laughed like it was hilarious. It sounded like it hurt. Badly. Every choked squawk from the other side of the door made me cringe. Finally, she said that I wasn't allowed in the basement, that she was going to lock the door and it was going to stay that way until she came back out. She made me promise. I... She forced me to promise her. Then, she went cry, quiet, and wouldn't answer me anymore. I could still hear her on the other side of the door. She was making that raspy sound again. I spent all of last night begging her to talk with me. I woke up here a few minutes ago. Now I'm going to... Hang on. Someone's at the door. I've never been so happy to see Applejack in my entire life. I think I'm starting to cry. I was trying to explain everything that's happened, and she kept telling me to slow down and start over again, but I don't care. I'm so happy she's here. Applejack came by looking for Twilight. She says there's some sort of bug going around, and Canterlot is taking a real serious like, but she doesn't have too many details. Applejack wanted to see if Twilight knew anything about the symptoms Sweetie Belle is showing. Rarity has been taking care of her, but she'd feel better knowing Apple Bloom wasn't next to get sick. She says Sweetie Belle has been complaining about headaches. She's sleep-shrotting, 
and has a bad cough. She's come by, hoping Twilight could help with any of those in case Apple Bloom started displaying symptoms. Boy, did I ruin her day. I told Applejack everything that's happened up to this point. She said she was hoping Twilight might know something about the quarantine in effect. We're under a quarantine? I don't even know what that is, but that sounds bad. Applejack says things are fine. But the thing about Applejack is she's a terrible liar. I've picked up on this from her. You know things are really bad when she says, There's nothing to worry about. Though I guess we're not quite there yet. I begged her to check on Twilight for me, and she said she'd do just that. She used kicks and bucks to open the lock, smashed the hinges, and told me to wait at the kitchen. That was four hours ago. I kept calling down to the basement, but every time I did, Applejack told me to stay in the kitchen. I started to sneak down, but she got really, really, really mad when she caught me on the stairs. I couldn't see what was going on, but I know for a fact I don't want her to be mad at me like that, ever, again. It's a little past five now. Applejack hasn't come back upstairs, and she came back and fixed the door. I asked her what's going on, and she... she smiled at me. She told me there's nothing to worry about. I handed Applejack another nail and watched her beat it into the wood. It was evening by now. Applejack had insisted she came over and spent the night. I don't know why. I think she wanted to keep me company and help look after Twilight. I can't tell you how relieved I was. I wanted to ask about Twilight again. I wanted to know what was going on in the basement and outside and why every pony was suddenly so serious about everything. Ain't nothing to be worried about. I reckon this here is just a little routine precaution. Yes, sirree. Just a normal everyday medical drill. Applejack had tried to explain. I handed her another nail and she hammered it into place. Then, the look on my face must have spoke volumes because she bit her lower lip and gave a ragged sigh. It's gonna be okay, Spike. She said softly. But she didn't make eye contact. She put the hammer down and turned towards me. Y'all... Y'all understand you can't go downstairs, right? This is real important, Spike. She said. I stared at her. A sudden burst of anger rippled through me. Why couldn't I go downstairs? Why couldn't I see my sister? What is every pony trying to keep from me? Applejack couldn't tell me what to do. Who was she to decide where I could and couldn't go? I turned and stared at the basement door long and hard, while AJ put another board into place. Just until we figure out how to help her. Er, that is, what Twilight might be. She growled, paused, and sighed again. What? I snapped. Applejack's ears peeled back against her skull at my tone. I could tell she was stressed out. I was too. I had a right to know what was happening to my family. Everything's gonna be fine. It'll... Everything will be okay, Spock. Applejack stammered quietly. I could spit fire. So it's not okay now? Is that what you're saying? I had snapped. I watched tiny curls of smoke rise from my nostrils and dance in angry ribbons in the air. I could feel the heat radiating through my throat. Fire. I wanted to spit fire at her. I'd expected her to start yelling at me again, or at least firmly tell me why I was too young to understand or some other horse apples older ponies use when they want to avoid talking to me about something. I'm not stupid. I pick up on those things. But Applejack looked surprised. She didn't start yelling. She didn't even look angry. It was only then I noticed how misty her eyes had gotten, like she were holding back tears for my sake. Spock, please, trust me. Applejack asked me quietly and shot me the most apologetic look I'd ever seen. My anger melted away immediately. I sighed and nodded my head. Lost in thought, I reached down into the bucket and handed her another nail. Silently, she went back to boarding up the basement door. Wednesday. Conversation. I've finally fallen asleep in Twilight's room. Applejack had insisted I go to bed. She said she'd look after Twilight while I got some much-needed rest. Really, I couldn't blame her. 
I've been pulling late nights worrying about Twilight, and sleep was hard to come by with all the coughing and screaming she was doing. I was out like a light. At some point, I was aware there was a conversation going on downstairs, but I was so out of it, I couldn't concentrate on it. I just wanted more to sleep. Until the screaming started. Get off of me! I'm not sick! Calm down. We ain't saying y'all got it. We just discussing. No. No. We saw what they did to Rarity. I won't let them do that to me. You're in on it. You know what, Dashy? You're not making a whole lot of sense anymore. Yeah, I am. You're trying to trick me. You want my wings. You're all jealous. Hold her down. I got the rope. <clears throat> Don't touch me. Earth Pony is all in on it. I know you all are. It's a war. You're trying to make me like you. I won't let you. I won't. That was Rainbow Dash's voice. Bolsterous and unrestrained, like usual. But this time it was stressed. It was different than shrieks and hollers of wild excitement Pegasi were known for. This was more like an angry panic. I could hear thrashing downstairs and the sound of books tumbling to the ground from shelves. I could hear the sounds of fighting. Wowie zowie. Please calm down. Rainy, it's me. It's Pinky. You know me. We're friends, Dashy. You'd never do anything to hurt me. And I would never ever do anything to... Oof. You can't have them. You can't have them. You can't. They're my wings. They're mine. You can't have them. She ain't trying to take your wings, Dashy. She just... Oh, Nelly. Dashy, get off of her. Let go. D Dashy, that hurts. Please, that hurts. You don't want to hurt Andy Pink? Uh, stop. Let go. Let go. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I'll prove it. I can still fly. You can't have them. You can't. That's when everything went quiet. And that's when I made my move. The first thing I noticed were the feathers. Bright blue ones scattered all over the library. They were the same color of Rainbow Dash's coat. With the way they were scattered around, I didn't know any better. I'd swear Rainbow Dash was molting. But Pegasi don't molt, and from the way she was shouting, I could only assume Rainbow Dash is sick too. Several books had fallen off the shelves and were laying about the room. There were a few dots of red fluid on the floor, and I shuddered at the sight of it. And that was before I caught sight of the basement. The door was open. I crept quietly as I could, taking my time to work my way down to the basement staircase. The way the tree curved limited my view of the main room, but as I crept closer, more and more of it started coming into view. And as more of the basement started to come into view, the more I wanted to vomit. Blood. Blood was all over the walls, smeared and splattered with familiar hoof prints. With a bone-chilling shudder, I recognized those hoof prints. The blood spelled out words and phrases along the walls, as if some pony had run out of parchment and become desperate to write down her thoughts. I try to write down what I could read, but it's really difficult to make out some words. Earth ponies, no cure, aggression, wrong blood, get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. It goes on like this all around the room. A horrible, hypnotizing pattern that ends in a large, messy splatter. Symptoms, headache, cough, anger, Bad water, choke, bad blood, help me. In the corner sat Twilight, herself. Her eyes were rolled back in her head, and a long, continuous, guttery rasp echoed past her lips. She was covered in bloody bandages, and secured to the corner with a length of strong rope. Applejack's handiwork. There was a makeshift straight jacket around her upper torso, keeping her from actively moving around the basement and leaving her more or less bound to that corner. That meant she was making the blood writing before Applejack had come over. She was sitting on her haunches, still as a statue, and her mouth hung open to admit a dry, raspy hiss. That's all I got to see. Way too much. Before I had to duck back into the stairwell and process what I just saw. What was happening to the town? What had happened to Twilight? I wanted to rush over and pull her out of that, 
They couldn't keep her tied up like that. I couldn't stop myself. I missed Twilight so, so, so much. And seeing her like that, I lost control. I ran up to her and wrapped my claws around her. Even if she couldn't tug me back, I just... I just had to. I didn't make it close enough to touch her with a claw tip in the slightest. No, I was maybe two steps from the staircase before a thick brown rope lassoed itself around me and tugged me back onto my butt. I already knew what was happening before the shadow loomed over me, and a thick country accent drawed broke the silence. Out of partner. You picked a bad time to wake up. Applejack loomed over me, glaring down with a look of disdain. I flashed a nervous smile, and she gave a sigh. Thing is, I don't think she was mad. She didn't sound mad. She sounded exhausted. Sugar Cube, I told you not to sell hoof down here, didn't I? Yeah, Applejack was mad. I stared at her silently, going over options I had in my head. Did I race back upstairs? Did I break out of the rope with the burst of fire? And a man twilight be set free? Did I plead for mercy? In the corner, Pinkie Pie was nursing to a bandage over her left ear. I could already guess. Rainbow bitter. A little further over, Fluttershy was sitting against the wall, with Rainbow Dash laying in her lap. The cobalt pegasus shuddered and trembled feverishly in Fluttershy's grasp, mumbling to herself and clearly out of it. Her wings had become completely devoid of feathers. All of them were gone, leaving thick, bony tendrils of naked skin sprouting from her shoulders. Fluttershy was dotting her head with a damp sponge and shushing her quietly. Sugar Cube? Applejack asked. I looked up. She glared down at me. Y'all... thirsty? She asked after peering at me for what seemed like forever. I shook my head. Thirsty? How could I be thirsty at a time like this? I promptly held up a claw. Applejack glanced over towards Pinkie Pie, and Pinkie Pie gave a sullen sigh. Spike? Hey, Spike? Come here. She cooed me quietly. The way you might coo a feral dog or some unstable creature. I peered at her curiously and looked up at Applejack. She nodded her head and I quietly climbed to my feet and made my way over to Pinkie who smiled at me sadly. Are you thirsty, Spike? She asked me, and flashed me a nervous grin. Again, I shook my head. No, I wasn't really thirsty. Pinky and Applejack exchanged glances. Y'all sure we can't interest you in a nice cool glass of water, Spike? Applejack asked, slowly approaching me with a glass of water she'd gotten from somewhere. Behind me, Pinky tensed up as if she were preparing for someone to hit her. I frowned. No, thank you. I'd really like to know what's going on, though. Like, for real, okay? Now, maybe? I'm not cool with Twilight being all tied up like that. I snapped, jerking a claw over towards my sister. Applejack and Pinky nodded to each other, and Applejack placed the glass of water she was holding on the side. Spike. Y'all need to listen closely, all right? Your sister... Twilight sick, Spike. She's sick with something the folks up in Canterlot are calling the rasp. Other than that, we don't know much about it. Dr. Stable up and disappeared, and Nurse Redheart is running ragged with all these cases. Right now, we're trying to figure out what exactly to do. But I'd hoped y'all wouldn't have to see her like this. Seems like it affects Pegasi and Unicorn. But it ain't got no effect on us Terra Ponies. I reckon it's our natural defenses against getting sick. But even with the Terra Ponies up and about, things ain't looking good. That's all the news we've got, Applejack said miserably. I stared at her with my mouth wide open. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The whole town? In Twilight 2? Was this some sort of horrible nightmare? Twilight? I asked turning towards the purple unicorn strapped to the corner. She didn't reply. She only continued to sit there, gurgling a quiet, hissing noise. Her eyes were rolled back into her head, 
and a slack line of drool dangled from her lips. I wanted to cry. This couldn't be the end of my sister's journey. This couldn't be the end of everything she built for herself. Not this. Twilight? I sobbed, reaching out to her. Her eyes snapped open and settled on me for an instant. Then the rest of the room. I could tell something was very, very wrong. She leapt to her hooves instantly, and hurled herself in my direction. If it weren't for the rope restraining her, she'd have crashed into me. Instead, she was standing on her hind legs, snapping and gnashing at the air. She strained the rope to its limit, choking herself with her wild attempts to get free. For whatever reason, she didn't bother trying to use her magic. Spike! Spike, thank goodness it's you! Spike, listen to me. There's something wrong with my blood. I can fix it. But I need more time, Spike. I need more time. I need... G give me your blood, Spike. Can I have yours? I need your blood. I can fix with your blood. Give me your blood. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. She screamed over and over again, until it slurled into one long, harmonized cry. She threw herself forward again, bouncing against the strength of Applejack's parented knots. She hissed and gurgled, biting at chomping the air in my direction. Applejack watched sadly and shook her head. Starts with the urge for a drink. Ponies get real thirsty and cough a lot and claim they got a headache. After that, they don't want water no more. They think something's wrong with them. Cough gets worse and worse. Then they start thinking up things that ain't real. Thought it was just Twilight at first. That ain't the case. Twilight, Lyra, Rarity, Sweetie Belle, all of them claims there's something wrong with her blood. In Rarity's case, she kept saying her magic was off, but... But I didn't... I didn't really think nothing of it, because... Oh, rares. Applejack whimpered quietly. She threw in a deep breath, rubbing the back of her hoof over her eyes and adjusted her hat. We... We don't know how ponies are catching it. We don't know why we earth ponies are immune to it, either. Pegasi, well, they get real aggressive-like. They don't want no water, either. And they get real stressed out. Rainbow Dash and Thunder Lane both started screaming that some pony was trying to steal her feathers, even though she lost all of them before the sickness. Alrighty, ain't rightly know how it affects dragons, Applejack said. Slowly, it dawned on me why they didn't trust me. Had I been acting strange lately? Sleeping, sure, but I hadn't... I'd been tired, and really worried. But what if I'm infected? What if my scales fall off? What if I lose my fire breath? What if I start hurting ponies? I wanted to cry out, to assault my fears and beat them into place. I wasn't sick. I couldn't be. I had to take care of Twilight. There had to be something I could do. I'm fine, I growled, clenching my claws into my hoof. I don't care if I'm sick. We have to fix Twilight. We have to make this better. I barked. I could fear the tears welling up in my eyes. Without Twilight, I didn't have any sort of plan. I didn't even have any sort of hope. The town was closed, and the sickness was everywhere, and it was only a matter of time before... I didn't want this to happen. I couldn't let this happen. I wouldn't let this happen. The thing about the water. And that's rabies. That's rabies, but, uh, I ain't never seen no rabies like this before. And this, this ain't rabies. I ain't never seen nothing like it. R rares? I'm sorry. I shoulda. Applejack sputtered to herself. I was too busy staring at Twilight to really pay attention to Applejack. My mind was racing through every issue of Power Ponies, the Griffin Tales, and Dragon Defenders, and the Revengers. Any relevant issue to sneaking out of a heavily guarded area. Even if it wasn't under the same circumstances, maybe there was something I could do that might work anyway. Come on, Spike. Think. Think, think, think. What would Twilight do? What would Big Sister say to her Big Sister brain? She's standing right next to me. Listen to her. What is she saying? 
I desperately clawed at the walls of my own head, searching for an answer that wasn't there. This was way too big for me to handle, and I didn't know who else could help. The princess wasn't responding to me. Dr. Stable was nowhere to be seen. Nurse Redheart was running ragged. And most of the Pegasus ponies and unicorns were apparently infected with the rasp. I looked at Twilight, after having stepped back from her after several outbursts. She seemed to have forgotten all about me. She's gone back to making guttural hisses and staring into space behind her eye sockets. I stare for a long time. She didn't move. She didn't speak. That wasn't my sister anymore. I felt a bitter, burning anger inside of me, a way that I'd never felt before. Rage, despair, frustration, and hopelessness all melted into one ferocious, strangled scream from my lips. I wanted to burn down the whole library. None of this was fair at all. Twilight was a good pony. Why did bad things have to happen to good ponies? I wanted to tear through the wall. I wanted to march right up to the guards and demand that they let us into Canterlot for help. I wanted to write Princess Celestia 10,000 letters demanding to know why she abandoned us. I didn't do any of those things. Instead, I simply lifted my arm, brought my close fist to my muzzle, and coughed into it absentmindedly. Oh no.